Hello, it's Sisvolk. Time to enjoy card making with me. This will be the second video where you can learn how to use text stencils or other positive shaped stencils in different ways. In the last video I showed you how to apply glue stencil spray to the back of the stencils to make them sticky and have them in place when working with them. For the first card I will demonstrate today it is handy to have the stencil sticky, but it is not necessary. With a pencil I first trace the outlines of the stencil. For that I just use a mechanical pencil. The one I use is 0.5 mm. You can hold the stencil with your fingers or even with magnets. When tracing you will have to hold it if you didn't stick it down. When I was younger I remember always slipping when tracing stencils. Partly the issue for that is that you are pressing too hard on the pencil and that you might be tracing in an unnatural direction. Better turn your paper and stencil or change the direction you are drawing lines in. Advantage of drawing with a pencil is that you can still erase errors you made. To lighten the pencil marks I use a kneading eraser. Such an eraser is useful to lighten pencil marks to remove parts, but not completely, so we can still see the lines. This outline text I will color and do it in a way that it has dimension and shading. The pencils I use are the Derwent Lightfast pencils. They are oil based. The paper I'm using is Craft Emotions color cardstock, meant for alcohol markers and pencils. Here is already a card I made. For this card I used the same Derwent Lightfast pencils. I colored with brown at the bottom of the letters and red at the top. And I also added smooth shading. Let me show you how easy it is to make this. I start coloring with a red pencil. From all letters I will trace the top outlines with this red pencil. And to make these lines I press firmly on the pencil. Keep turning the pencil to keep the point sharp enough. You see we first only trace the outlines of the top of the text. And we will do the same for the bottom outlines of the text with a brown pencil. Next we will color the letters the following. Give harder pressure on the pencil closer to the outlines and press softly in the middle of the letters. It is not a big deal if you slip, because we are going to make shadows in a moment. We will do the same for the bottom, but with the brown pencil. Press harder at the edges and softer in the middle. At the point where the red and brown meet, we overlap a little of both colors. So in that middle part there is brown on top of red. And later we come in with some more red to blend it out. Hold and turn your paper in a way that it is most comfortable to color. Give light pressure when blending colors together. It's better to do several layers of brown and red than to color one thick layer all at once. I now will show how to make this easy shadow around the text. On the card example I everywhere made a shadow with a brown pencil. I will show it on the other woof text so you are not distracted. Everywhere around the text you make an even border of pencil coloring. Thinking about where shadows are needed can be a brain teaser. And there are many ways to make shadows, but this is by far the easiest one. Just color around the whole text and make this border equally wide everywhere. Later in the video I will show you another surprising way to make a shadow. When coloring on smooth paper you can still erase errors, even for these colored pencils. Ok, now I have colored an inside and also an outside. Of course you can do the in and outside on both texts. To smoothen the coloring, or so to say to blend it out, we will be using odorless turpentine, especially for oil colors. And we need a paper stump. A paper blender, we will dip it in the turpentine. I close the jar immediately to not spoil anything. 
My paper blender still has some color on it from the last time I used it. I can wipe the color and excess turpentine on a paper towel. With this paper stump I can smoothen the shade. Easily to do and with great smooth effect. See? This product I use to blend I call odorless turpentine, but in English you might know it as Gamsol. The product is to thin your oil paints and painting medium. It is also suitable for cleaning your brushes and it is a healthier alternative for the normal well-known white spirit turpentine. The same we can do for the coloring of the letters. We can smoothen the pencil lines. However, do this carefully. You will easily lose the highlights in the middle because you can now smudge the thicker pencil lines and smear it into lighter parts. Smear your paper blender onto a paper towel every now and then to remove the excess pencil color from it. Best is to blend from light to dark and clean the paper blender in between. You can also color some more after blending, if you want more pigment. Using a fine liner, here I have the Derwent 0.51, we can add clear black outlines. You don't need the stencil to do this. Would you lay the stencil on top of the coloring and trace, the lines would not be on spot everywhere. It is easier to draw straight lines by turning the paper and drawing lines from left to right, if you are right-handed. And draw lines from near to far. I will also color the shade for the top word with a red pencil. And also blend it out with the blender. Well, actually, don't do this blending after adding the fine liner, because you will smudge your black lines with the turpentine with Orgamsol. My red shading now gets grey smudges. The paper stump I cut with scissors to keep a sharp point. What you can do next is decorate the background by using more stencils. For example this poop shape. Just drop it everywhere on the background and be sure to overlap the text and also the edges of the paper. Trace it all around, but don't trace on top of the color text. Make sure the images all point in a different direction and are about the same distance apart. This is a short example, so I leave it with these three for now. When you have these shapes traced, you can add the shading on the outside. This time use a blue pencil and color very lightly around the shapes. I chose the blue color to give that poop shape the idea of whipped cream. You can go darker near the edges. If you want to blend it out with a paper stump, take notice that you don't smudge that fine liner. And then you get this effect. In addition, you can add highlights on the letters. For that, I use the Stapler white pen. On the right top sides of the letters you can draw some stripes to get a shinier effect. On my finished card I colored in thicker layers. That is why my text is so vibrant. I also stamped the dog with the dog stamp set and colored it in with the same Derwent oil-based light foss pencils. I colored many layers and blended the pencil layers before adding the fine liner. On the nose of the dog I added some glossy accents. Isn't he cute? Let's now continue with another text and do a more quick and easy, but surprisingly beautiful technique. To make it easier for myself, I sprayed the back of the stencils with glue stencil spray. Check out my first video to see how. You can find a link for it in the descriptions. I now place the stencil on the paper. I can still move it easily before I firmly press it down. If I wanted, I could measure and have it spaced out perfectly. Only for now, I trust on my eyeballing. First, let's just trace the stencils with a fine liner. I still use the same Durant 0.5 fine liner. At the moment, I am tracing on a blank piece of paper. But if you want some color, 
You can of course also take colored paper or ink blend some colors in the background. You can even make a nice gradient blend of different colors for the background. For now I keep it simple white and you will see that that will also be great. Do you see how much easier the tracing of the stencil is when you glued it down with stencil spray? Then you are also much less likely to slip. And should you slip, first check if it is in a place where you might later be able to stick part of a stamp over it. Like a paw, a tail or a ball of wool or a bone for example. Don't immediately give up when things go wrong. You can also always try to erase that mistake with a Tombow sand eraser. Now I can easily remove the stencils. If you want, you can color them in with pencils or markers or paint or even with tiny stamps if you have any. You could also cut them out and glue them raised on a nice background. But for this example, I will show you how to make a quick and flawless easy shadow around the text. Choose which side you want the light to come from. I choose the light to come from the top left, so that means the shadows should come from the bottom right. And therefore we want to draw at the bottom. Place the stencil back on the same text, but shift it one or two millimeter downwards and to the right, just a tiny bit. And stick the stencil to the paper firmly. So just stick back the stencil and position it slightly to the bottom right. The same distance for each stencil of course. I zoomed in some more for you to be able to hopefully see how to do it. To prevent making mistakes, I will first trace the shading with pencil. The kind of pencil is not important, I just use a slightly thicker 0.7mm mechanical pencil now. I now only trace the spots where that stencil falls over my previous drawings. And that is where we want the shadings to be, on the bottom right. So you only draw lines on the outside of the text shape. Places where there are lines outside of that stencil you do not trace, because if you would do that you would draw on top of the text and will get confused about where the shadows will be. If I did it correctly, I now trace the line everywhere at the bottom and right overhanging parts of the text stencils. We now can check if it is right by removing the stencils. Little corrections can still be made because it is pencil. This one I will stick down a little lower and trace it again. Now we see exactly where we want to color our shadows. Again soften these pencil lines with a kneadable eraser. And now using my fine liner, I can see exactly where I want to draw. If I would have placed the stencil more downwards and more to the right, there would have been a bigger shading. Also you can choose to color this shading with other colors or other pens. A gel pen would be great as well. I always find making a shadow like this for my own interpretation quite tricky and this helps enormously to always color the right places for the shadow. Let's finish this card with a nice kit. I colored this one with the Derwent pencils. Short videos how I color that cat you can see on my YouTube channel as well as on my Instagram page. I will link it down below. Only this cat on this white card looks a bit bold to me. Let's add some stamps to it without having to color more. I want to keep the text white so I replace the stencils back in their place. You see they are still sticky. Let me stamp some cat paws and some balls of wool on this card. I use black Versafine ink. This ink stamps perfectly with sharp edges. You could also use it for heat embossing as it stays wet a bit longer. There is a spot here. I can stamp over that nicely and cover it up. And now I stamp in a pattern as if the cat walked over the paper behind the text. And to achieve that effect, I also stamp on top of the stencil. Would I not stamp on top of the stencil, the image would get less dimension. And also always stamp the paws over the edge of the paper 
so it seems more realistic. Because I'm not sure if the stamping I have in mind will work, I just stamp on a piece of scrap paper and hold it next to the card to see if it fits. And I stamp the ball of yarn with the color tea dye. The color matches the cat, but it needs another color for contrast and interest. I take vintage photo distress oxide. Yes, this is perfect. It is easy that these balls of yarn can be stamped on top of each other. Or should I say wool? Yarn or wool? What is it? The stencils can now come off. And you see exactly that they mark the text perfectly. The paws are behind the text. When I spray some water on a microfiber cloth and wipe them with it, they are ready to use for next time and still sticky. By the way, Proficiat is a Dutch word joke for proficiat, which means congrats. Check out my first video to find out how easily to remove that sticky spray. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned new ways to use these text stencils and to add shadow to the text. You can find more card inspiration on my Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest accounts. I encourage you to watch the first video with the text stencils if you haven't already seen it and keep an eye out on new videos with the text stencils to come soon, hopefully next week. Have a nice day and enjoy card making! Bye bye!